Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Lots of hot topics with the one, the only, the original, blue-eyed, dashing yeah. father of the year, Chris Frangiola. Thank you very much. Father, thank you for saying father I of the year because like I truly believe I am father I of the year. I kind of feel like you need to um, milk that more. Went to a gymnastics class yesterday with her. <sighs> First one, gymnastics. I took Mackenzie to gymnastics. Yeah. did she? How did she do? She was like pretty good, but I remember I had to bring the boys and then they were like disruptive and the lady was Russian and she was really like, well, you can't bring those boys anymore. And then yeah. I just stopped going. I'm seeing that th- it, she's in there. She's four and she's in like a class where they don't do anything. They just yeah. run around. But there's kids in there who are like 15 and look, I mean, they're great. Well, yeah. And there's like a Russian coach, a man who's just like screaming at them. Like, I thought we couldn't do that anymore. That that was something that Wait, went which out. Which one are you at? Wait, no, I won't tell. Tell it's me right later. Here, don't, Hills, don't, okay, Hills. don't tell me which one you're, yeah. uh, you're at. Oh, because my, my niece was very competitive in it, and she was at a, a hardcore one, I want to say, in like North Hollywood or Van Nuys. Yeah. This but I mean, she's still great. She's still doing, she's like still a full stunt woman and stuff. I thought these girls were doing amazing. And yeah. as soon as they landed, he'd go, what are you doing? Your hand's straight, not up, straight. And the girls, were, I mean, these girls were like, no. <laughs> I was like, wow, I thought, because gymnastics has been through it, you know, yeah, they've had all yeah. sorts of scandals. I thought at this point, you got to, everything's got to be real nice and no problems, but apparently not. He's screaming. That hasn't stopped. I also think they scream in a good way because I think they see something in these kids and like a... You, I don't want you to waste this talent. Like nobody ever screamed at me because they never saw anything. Me too. I, I totally agree. <laughs> yeah, so they're like, totally I agree. Didn't, like I didn't that have all of a sudden, the kids are just right. That they can just do that shit. Right. Yeah. Something's it's like there. Amazing. I know. I would never be able to do it. None so. of my kids were able to. No. So I don't think my daughter's. I mean, who knows? Right now, she's running pretty fast. <laughs> And that's all. We, we can hang on to that at least. She runs pretty fast. Uh, we have some stories that you brought, which I wrote down, but I want to get into the the thing that everyone, people are talking about this too. Mm-hmm. So I think it was Friday yeah. that um, Kelly Rowland, yes. a star in her own right, former of Destiny Child, went and did uh, Hoda and Jenna. And then she was supposed to co-host like the second hour. And I take think she was Jenna's. a guest on the second hour and was going to take over the third hour, which, okay, is, okay. which is Jenna and, and Hoda. And it got out by sources that mm-hmm. she was not happy with the dressing room and was like, fuck this and bailed on the third hour coasting. Right. Of co-hosting. And everyone was chiming in on it. And, you know, Bethany Frankel was like, you know, look at, oh, and then she took out her thing where she was just like, I've done it. The place, you're basically putting your makeup on in a closet and da da da. And the other thought was, is it because JLo was there and JLo had the bigger well, that's what I heard. Dressing she room. wanted the bigger one. JLo was already occupying it. Um, so, I mean, but whatever. If you're just going to do star power, JLo's bigger. Kelly I, Rowland's big star, but JLo's bigger. Right. I think what happened was, I think it just came to Kelly Rowland on the wrong fucking day. Yeah. And sometimes in this business, you it's it comes on a day where you just feel like so disrespected yeah. and so unvalued. That you're like, hold on a minute. I'm co-hosting a whole third hour of something for free mm-hmm. with topics and bullshit. And this is my fucking room? Yeah. Like, no. I, I'm right. out. I'm out. I am not feeling it. I'm out. That's what I think happened. Uh-huh. And her people were probably just like, you know, nodding, knowing, you knowing exactly what to do. Um, Hoda has since spoken and said which I think is the right thing to say. She can come back anytime, have my dressing room, yeah. put it to rest. She doesn't want to be woman against woman. No. But yeah, these are the kind of things that happen. And also, if Kelly Rowland, I'm, I'm sure she she's probably a smart lady, she should come back. Everybody will have fun with it. Yeah. You know, everyone, these shows all need ratings right now. Yes. I mean, nobody, TV is, you know, especially network television is right. dying. So have her back. Everyone laughs about it. She held a copy, gives her her dressing room, shoot a bit. 
Yes, I mean, totally come on, shoot have a bit. some fun with it. Well, are, you, are they looking to yeah. hire Chris Frangiola for the Today <laughs> Show? Ready to move to New York? Why not? Uh, also, but, I also think like I've had that happen too, and it haunted me for years. A bad dressing room. Uh, I felt like maybe I had been a bit diva. Okay, so I would go on the Tonight Show and do this this thing. I probably did it like five times, and it was like a little bit they had going where it was like a panely bit, and it was called Coulda, Woulda, Shoulda. Okay. And it was while we were on Ch- Chelsea, and I never did stand up on Tonight Show, but I got to do this little funny bit, and we'd come and Jay Leno with Show? Jay Leno, and he could yeah. not have been nicer. Right. And so the last time I went on it, I was having like a stressful situation with a friend, which the text we're texting back and forth, so I wasn't like in the greatest mood. And I went to the get my makeup done, which the makeup artist, this guy, we'd always had this great rapport, or whatever, and. Anyway, I was not really liking how I looked. Yeah. And I was just like tense. And I finally, I'm like, it's fine. Let me just finish it in the room. So I go in the room and I finish my makeup. Hence, this is the reason why I do my own makeup all the time now. Yeah. Okay. Because of this. I do the show. The show goes fine. They never, ever asked me back. Well, because and the show ma- was on for years. I never knew why. I finally asked, who's the guy that, that came from the booking of that now works for Kelly Clarkson? That oh, worked for us. Yeah. Are we can say um, his name. There's Mark, nothing wrong. This is not a bad story. Yeah. I forgot. Bob his name. Reed. Bob Reed, yeah. I finally said one day, Bob, you've got to tell me what happened. Was it the makeup artist getting his feelings hurt because I was a little like snippy? This is like two, two years later. Yeah. And he goes, No, the woman who was above me just decided she wasn't into you anymore. Oh, yeah. And she just didn't want to book you for stuff anymore. <laughs> and that was bu- it. That's the business. You know? And that She's, was it. Yeah. It had nothing to do with the makeup, nothing to do with me being snippy. But what I learned from that was like, this will never happen to me. Right. I come hair and makeup ready. And then I let the hair and makeup people judge me yeah. if they so choose. Right. Like, then I look even better. Their job's super easy. And they love me. And they're like, that was the easiest job I ever did. And I looked good. Yeah. So that's one thing I do because God forbid, I mean, with all, and then with everybody wanting to tell on stars and their bad behavior, it's fucking terrifying out there. I, I, one time I had one guy, I forget we were shooting something. Uh, We were doing like press for a show that I think you were on, we were all on it. It was that Chelsea Lately time. Oh, for after Lately. And the guy's like, you want me to do your hair? And I know I'm usually, it's just fine. Yeah. What is your hair? And I was like, yeah, I was like, go ahead. Yeah. And I saw the comb come out and the The hot comb, the hot comb. And, and he's, (laughs) and I no mirror, you know, they they, they turn you away from the mirror. I'm like, oh, I need to see that. But I can't. And I don't want to say, turn me back Because you're afraid you're going to be Kelly Rowland. Right. Exactly. And he's, and I'm feeling like this is getting big. This is big. Because my hair could be big if I didn't taper. Right. T- and sure enough, he spun me around. I was like, oh my Did God. you look like Johnny, a Backstreet Boy or Johnny what? Can't, no, I look like Tammy Faye Baker. I mean, it was just like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Johnny Kansas was shooting it, and yeah. I walked in. He's like, "What? What is? Is this a joke?" I'm like, "It's not. Like, it's not." I had to go in the bathroom and wet it, and oh my god, never again. I don't. It's so yeah. stressful if you don't know the hair and makeup people. That's why I say to anybody, do your own hair and makeup, and then just have them enhance it. But I'm don't also go like, with a wet head. Yeah. But also, that can be that can screw you too. Sometimes people have come with a wet head hoping to get a big blowout while they're there. Yeah. And there was a, in a miscommunication and they're like, we don't have time to blow out this girl's oh, hair. I'm doing four wet. other people's hair. Who does this fucking bitch think she is? Yeah. But there was a miscommunication between her PR person and, and like, right. meanwhile, when JLo did our show, I remember they said the hair and makeup people, and this is 10 years ago or whatever it was, was requesting $10,000. For do. for Chelsea lately, this is what I recall. Okay, yeah. allegedly, ten thousand dollars were her hair and makeup people to come into Chelsea, to, lately which and Chelsea do her, lately yeah. would have to pay them. Right, and I can't remember. I think they got them down to five or something. Oh, but they bargained. but they bargained. But like <laughs> she only yeah. looked half as good. But yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, amazing. I mean, what can you do? J Lo is like. Well, let's she's talk about J Lo. So, um, this have you heard about this Amazon I have. Prime? I. I heard about the movie. Okay, so yeah. from the dreams of Jennifer Lopez, that's yes. what they say in the. Basically, it is 
a visual album, but it's more of a, it is a full like length movie. So it's like music videos, but that, vignettes, right? No, you're not, you're not you, following a story. Let me just tell you, it's so weird and bad. It's like, you're like, definitely, I, I'm one of probably millions this weekend that was like, what the fuck am I watching? Okay. Right. So it starts out with her monologuing that in Puerto Rican culture, which we know she's Puerto Rican, there was an old story of a love torn thing. And one after they broke up, one turned into a rose and one turned into a cockatoo or whatever, a bird. Oh, okay. And so here's the story of love. And then each vignette video is a song. And so it starts out where she's a futuristic Rosie the Riveter. Fight, mm-hmm. And those women mm-hmm. all are dancing with her. And at the heart is like a machine. Okay. Then the next one, she's in literally a glass house. This is where I turn it off. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't get through it. Yeah. Okay. I actually looked up summaries because I was like, I kind of yeah. want to talk about it. And it's all like, you know, you. I guess the fun is for you to, if you're a huge fan, to be like, oh, this is husband number one. Oh, this was the waiter. Oh, this was Casper. Oh, this was Ben Affleck number one. The first time around, is this she doing is Mark songs Anthony. that are supposed to be? Yes, it's all about her love life. Then here gets here is where it gets crazy. She has little acting parts, so she has, I think, I want to say Fat Joe. God, they're going to kill me. If it I'm is Fat wrong. Joe. Okay, thank God. It is Fat Joe. Okay, he's a therapist. Yeah, which is a stretch. Yeah. They just put him in a gray sweater. Yeah, and he's her therapist. <laughs> Do you imagine your J Lo like this? You like you? First of all. First of all, I don't even know that you should be picking a male therapist, quite honestly, if you're a woman. I'm just going to say that right now. Fat Joe's interesting casting for that. Okay, I so mean, anyway. Mandy Patinkin would have been a good, <laughs> you know, casting on that one. And who's the new guy now and blah, blah, blah. Okay, then they have this reoccurring sketch going. Okay. Which has Trevor um, Trevor Noah. from the... Noah. Yeah, they ha- it has Kiki Palmer. It has uh, Jane Fonda. Oh, it has all these other people that her her friends that she said she asked him just come for an hour. I'm like, there's no way this was an hour. Hair, makeup, right? And then I'm sure they did the vignettes by themselves. Okay, okay. It's very AI, very cyber, whatever you call it. What, was, what was AI before it was called AI? Uh, like reality? Like, no, no. Like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, but like um, like the word for special effects. Oh. Of AI before it was yeah. AI. Uh, like, yeah. like special effects, I guess. I don't know. I oh, know what you're saying. I know, I know. CGI. CGI, yes. Yeah. Exactly what I was thinking of. I mm-hmm. knew there was a C. Okay. So they're sitting there and they are, it's like a, the worst SNL sketch you've ever seen. They're like, what is going on with her? What? And they're all zodiac signs. So it's like, she should have known she shouldn't have gone for an Aquarius. She's a Leo or whatever. And each person represents a zodiac sign. And they're all the gods of love fighting with each other about what J-Lo's heart should do before we have to see the next dancing video. Okay. And and it's just so bad. And then they have a Vanderpump Rules reference. Oh, I would. Jane Fonda goes, I think at this point, I'd rather just go home and watch Vanderpump Rules. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Make anyway, it n- nice and fresh. She financed this herself, $20 million. Yeah. And people are like, did her team want her to do it or not? The overall consensus is it's number one. It's people hit. watched yeah. it. She's going on tour. It doesn't matter. But does anyone love J-Lo more than J-Lo loves J-Lo? No. Right. Yeah. And and I think she saw Beyonce doing visual videos and, every, and movies or whatever they do. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I want to have this attached to how it. long is this is it an hour and a half yes or? yeah okay <sighs> okay the other thing that took over everyone's weekend this is risa no risa tisa risa tisa sure she is this fabulous woman that okay. bared her soul in such an eloquent well spoken written everything it's 10 minute videos on tiktok okay uh, fif- uh 50 of them over 50 of them she goes, this is the series I'm going to call Who the Fuck Did I Marry? She met a guy in 2020. Okay. He was a dirty John. Okay. But she walks through each thing from house shopping to the car shopping to why he didn't want to show the proof of funds to getting married all through COVID, which added to that. But what is so amazing about her and why people are loving her is because throughout it, she constantly is taking accountability for like, there was more red flags than a UN center, whatever she says. Like, um, 
why, you know, they were marching on my lawn and I didn't notice all these things. But then she would say, I didn't want to be alone. I was 39 years old. I wanted to believe this was all true, but I was right. suspicious. I, you know, I would, he would show me, he had bank statements. He had, obviously we're going to get to the part where there's fake bank statements. I want, people should give her the views because she's doing great. One of the things she said she wanted to do was go to London and, and um, Paris. Well, an influencer has stepped forward and is funding her trip. Oh, how nice. I'm sure she will do something else with this. Yeah. Um, maybe interview other people. I don't know what she's going to do after this, but she's yeah. made her money. She's made her lemonade. But then the thing that people are mad at is they he is a psychopath. He didn't, I don't think, I don't know. I didn't listen to the whole thing because I'm taking right. my time enjoying it. And I don't want to ruin it for people. But he's definitely a pathological liar. And so then another content creator found him. Oh. And people were like, you know, other con- that's not really your job to find the person that she's divorced from that's obviously not a safe person. He now has come forward and said like, oh, there's more reasons to why Risa Tisa and I broke up. Mm, and what's his name? I didn't, well, I didn't listen Timmy to it. I'm, I'm just happy for her that she's going to Europe. She's going to chronicle Europe. People oh. are happy for her. And she was like, <clears throat> ladies, you've got to ask these questions. You know, he said he went to San Diego State and played football and then played arena football. I didn't know anything about arena football. I never looked it up. And then I realized that Peter said he went to UC San Diego. Right. And I had never seen his diploma. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So you could be. Um, so I walked in and I asked him today, where is the diploma? Yeah. And he's like, I don't know. It's like in the office or whatever. I don't even know. Well, you guys have been together a long time now. Well, I feel like I'm that. ready to crack it open. <laughs> I would like to gain 400,000 views right. yeah. and, and followers in a weekend. And okay. if it means that I have to crack open the fact that I have been duped uh-huh. by a creep right. from San Diego, like she has, then I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to, to expose it all. I'd like to see... Like, I feel like you fall for these things. It's got to be... Not gonna. It's yeah. gotta be a little bit on you, because sometimes you hear something like, "Well, how would you not see that? Or how would you not see?" She this? totally says not... it's on her. Here, yeah. Here's the thing: they met in March, okay. right before the shutdown. Shutdown happens. They move in together. Right. Then there's all the COVID stuff. They're in Atlanta. All the COVID stuff is happening. The house buying. The looking at. Yeah. And the other thing I want to say is there's this way of where people say, hey, if you're manifesting a beautiful house, you know, the way to secret and manifest stuff is go look at houses, go get in a car. And I oh, that always pissed me off as a former realtor. Mm-hmm. Do not waste a realtor time, a time or a furniture person's time or a car dealer's time like yeah. someone because. That is what this person did. And she said, I think he got off on seeing me get excited about a house, right. get excited about a BMW, and then pull it out from underneath. I'm like, I think he also got excited seeing that guy who was waiting all day at the car lot for someone to yeah. walk up. Wow. And then spend hours and hours and hours with him. What about the other guy that showed him 25 houses in Atlanta? Yeah. Never got, wrote up offers, which is very time consuming. All of it. So- yeah, he's he would lie for no reason to lie. He lied because that's the whole thing. So she finds out family members. And the biggest thing is that he would talk on the phone to all these people, but not put them on speaker. But I guess they never existed. Yeah. So she was trying to say, yes, was I taken? Yes. Should I ask more questions? Yeah. But I'm telling you why I believed it. Right. Because he'd be like, oh, I got my brother on the phone. Yeah, she's here. Say hi to Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. And then because of COVID, it wasn't weird that they never met. Wow. And it wasn't weird that they got married at the courthouse, just the two of them. You know Mm. what I mean? Okay. So very, very, everyone's going crazy over that. Listen, I talk a lot of Juicy Scoop. Sometimes people are like, Heather, your loose lips have sunk some ships and you were the captain. I hear you. But sometimes I just got to share it. And I know sometimes you hear something on this show and you want to get on the phone and share with your besties. Well, right now, the best deal in wireless is at Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile has wireless plans starting at $15 a month. That's unlimited talk and text plus data for $15 a month. And at Mint, families start at just two lines. I love this because there's no complicated or hidden fees. I have a plan with my mother-in-law and my college kids, and it all is so easy. Also, switch to Mint Mobile and get your first three months of premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. 
To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash juicy scoop. That's mintmobile.com slash juicy scoop. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash juicy scoop. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Now, this I thought was pretty juicy. Okay. This Airbnb person got an Airbnb. And the lady was upset that he, that the neighbors were complaining. He's like, you're full of shit. No neighbors are complaining. I'm not paying. Right. So she's like, no, you are going to pay. And I'm going to, you know, and he goes and show me the photos of where people were partying at my house. They weren't. Well, then the person who owns the house pulls all the ring photos and sees that he was cheating on his wife. That there was a woman there. Oh. So then she said, either you're going to pay me the money you owe me plus all these fi- fi- fees for also writing a bad Yelp review for me. Yeah. And or I'm going to send this to your wife. So then he's like, wait a minute, I'm being extorted. But anyway, I thought I just thought that was like, just be careful. I feel yeah. like Airbnb people are like airline stewardesses. Uh huh. Just be nice. <laughs> Get the fuck out. I don't like the Airbnb. I tried it a few times and I I prefer the hotel. I don't like the Airbnb. You know, I feel like people are moving towards hotel. Back yeah, into hotels I think now. so too. Because some cities just don't really allow Airbnb. I mean, New York City did not enough. They're being changed. stricter. Yeah, people yeah, are yeah. being stricter and neighborhoods are being stricter. But I've gone to a couple times where the key is not there and I'm like, hey, there's no, you can't contact anybody. And just, I've had a few. Yeah, when you, the key's not there at Friday at four and they're like, we reopen the office on Sunday. You're like, what? I know, exactly. I know what happened to me, like something similar. And I'm like, just go to me a hotel with a guy behind the counter and I could, you know, the key is there and I can't, you know. Whatever. Yeah, it's beach be cheating. Um, oh, Wait, before we get to this next one, you were we were going to talk about Soho House. What is the oh, scoop? Insane. For the people that don't know, Soho House is a... Yeah. It's been around for like, I don't know, 20 years. A long time. A long time. Maybe even longer. Yeah. LA, Malibu, Everywhere. London. Tri- and it's like a they private a dining them. place. You have to be approved. It's a private club. Like, yeah, you have yeah. to be approved. Not only do you have to pay to join, and then there's like a monthly, I mean, a, a yearly fee, right. whether you ever step foot or not. Right. It's private dining. If you're not a member, you can't go without a member. Yes. And the whole thing, at least in LA, is that they want artists. They don't. They won't let you use your cell phone. They don't let you go up to someone and be like, "Oh my God, right. I loved your work in this." You can have like power meetings, but also it's kind of good because if you're like an up and cupper comer in the business, you really do have access right. to some of these people that you wouldn't other have, and they they think, well, at least you're at this level because you were vetted. Yes. You were vetted that you were at least a, a junior agent or something. You at least had one screenplay sold. So what are they saying about that, this? Well, first of all, they're saying that Wall Street, Wall Street's involved, and they don't think it's going to last, so they're short-selling it, whatever that means. Just so the one in New York or like all of them? Well, right now, just the one in New York. So, okay. But if their stock plummets, then you know who knows what becomes of it. Uh, and a lot of people are upset that they're letting in too many people. You know, I guess it used to be very exclusive, depending upon the one you go Sounds to. Sounds like our border. <laughs> <laughs> it's very similar to the border. Yes, it's it's filled with migrants. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, that's what they're saying. There, people are upset they're letting too many people in. And I guess to get in, you not only have to pay the fee, whatever that is. I know the one in Malibu is even extra. I don't know how much it costs to get in the one yeah. in Malibu. But then you also have to have people. Uh, vouch for you, like they're already they already belong to it, right? And they have to write you like a note, like yeah, I like this guy or whatever. Which it all seems is like really that for French fries. I mean, I don't know whether they, but it is cool to I guess sit next to Larry I mean, Larry David in Malibu. I who if knows? the Malibu one closes, I just hope they make it another great restaurant because the location is so freaking fabulous. Mm, yeah. It's right next door to so uh, to Nobu. Yeah, and so. it used to be this restaurant that wasn't very good. The food wasn't very good, but I would go there anyway because if I couldn't get into Nobu, the it was so wonderful. And then about eight years ago is when they made it. So right. oh, Malibu, it's very nice. I and mean, I do like the vibe of it. I love to see people all in beige. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of beige and white <laughs> right. at the Soho One Malibu. Yeah. And there was a time I was thinking about it. My a friend of mine was in it, and I was like, "How much is it?" And it was a lot less expensive there. And I was like, "How often would I come out here?" It's still like a forty minute drive. And um, 
And then she was like, I don't think they'd want you, you know, because you're like a gossip person. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I can see why you wouldn't want me. Yeah. So, All right. so I never joined. Just and go to I, I get to be friends. I get yeah. to go when my friends invite me. And so far, I've been okay. I haven't gotten. I in looked trouble. it up one time because we have the apartment right next to it. Yeah, over there, and I, uh, and it said something like two thousand dollars, and I was like, "Oh, that's it? No, it's but a lot more it, now. Yeah, it's only two thousand dollars to to get the application, just to fill out the application. And then you don't get that back. Where that I goes towards? So. It probably goes Maybe. towards like I the don't. ten grand. I didn't grand. go that far. It probably into goes it. through the, to the ten grand. Yeah, like almost like we just don't want to waste our time. So you have to be pretty serious. If we reject you, they got to give you the two grand back. I who knows? But anyway, it's so a, they just don't want every loser trying. They're saying that it might be on the outs. That's the, the latest story. Just came. Well, it would out be. Today. Pre- There's been times I've come on a beautiful day as a guest of someone, and yeah. I mean, you're waiting in line to drop off your car, and it is packed. Oh man! And yeah. that is the thing that you're supposed to be able to always like get a table. Yeah. So if there's too many people, then there's too many people. There's too many VIPs everywhere, I, for as far as I'm concerned. Like, I go VIP to, like, concerts and stuff, and I'm like, wait a minute. There's a, what, everyone's VIP. And then, like, Delta Lounge, you know, the lounges in the airports? Yeah. Like, there's lines to get into them now. I'm like, well, what? Did, where, how is everybody VIP? Well, I'm glad you asked that, because at my on my new tour, Chris, oh, okay. at HeatherMcDonald.net, I am continuing the meet and greets, but they do cap out at 50. Is that right? They cap out at 50 for that exact reason. But, but you got to stop the shady people who walk out and then give their laminate to another person and then they walk in. Well, now, now I think I'm going to do the meet and greets before the show. Right. And you got to love me enough to get there a little early. Okay. Because I do believe th- that's a better way to go. And that's the way most artists do it. Right. But for me, I always wanted to be like preparing my act till the very last minute. Mm-hmm. But the new Heather is going to be more prepared. Okay. And we're going to do meet and greets before. That's a good idea. Yes. I think before is better. Yeah. Because yeah. then I'm like on a high and then I want to like leave. Yeah. And, or I wanna be also... with, and then I can be with my real, like not real friends, but my friends that are right. like family and friends that are in that city. Mm-hmm. We, I can visit with them. I wouldn't have them come before. But don't you feel it spoils it a little bit that they've seen you before you walk out on stage? Like it's supposed to be that. that oh, I, there, you know, there she this is. This is where the ego of me is now I'm putting that to rest. Okay. Oh, you're good. But one of the reasons I wanted to always do it after is that feeling of like how my parents would praise me after. Uh-huh. I wanted them to come up after they saw my act. Right. To be like, that was my favorite bit. That was my favorite part. But I noticed they really don't do that. It's really like they just wanted to meet me because of Juicy Scoop and, we, mm-hmm. and share whatever they want to share, their personal story. Something. Something about so it. So it doesn't really matter what the act is. Yeah. And then you piss off the man that you dragged mm-hmm. because now she has to wait in line. Yeah. And it might take up, up to another 30, 40 minutes. Or how quickly I pee, put on my lips. I'm always like, the minute the minute it starts, I can wait, go out there. But now I'm like, no, I'm going to do it before. Okay. So plan right. it. Plan it accordingly. Yeah, but good deal. Um, Okay. So Tom Sandoval yeah. did a article for the New York Times called How Tom Sandoval Became the Most Hated Man in America. Uh And he put a couple doozies in there. Yes. One was that he says when Ariana found out that he was cheating with her best friend, Raquel, that they went into the back alley of where he was performing and he was a victim of domestic abuse. Now he's saying that she hit him. Yeah. Okay. Mm, I don't... Yeah. Everyone's just kind of like, okay, dude. Then he went on to say, I'm not a pop culture expert. Granted, you're not Juicy Scoop, right? Right. But I think the reason everyone went so crazy, it was just the media crazy, is that it was up there with the OJ murder trial. Yeah. Which he was accused of killing two people, Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson, and the death of George Floyd. Yeah. He said he was getting that much press, right? He was as, getting as much that press much as press. They got. Yeah. Um, I don't believe he was. Uh, uh, at all, uh, and I don't think so. Obviously, he realizes that was an awful comparison to a murder of, of three people, right? And you know, like so bad. Of course, the writer of this was probably just like, "This is just gold." Like as exactly. she's like, "Let's play like this is fucking gold." I just think he's a douchey, narcissistic dude, right? Whose life has been extremely easy. He came out here extremely good looking. Mm-hmm. Was waning cables while actually getting legit work. Got on a show that he's been able to do for eleven years. Yeah. Always 
had a girlfriend. Yeah. Got to cheat on girlfriends. And not until he got caught is he now like, oh, my God, why is everybody so awful to me? So I just think some people are born douchey. Right. And you can't squeeze he's the got, douche. He's got a, douche, a very douchey look about him. I mean, that's like the he's whole just thing, a right? Douche. Yeah. Yes, he wears, he goes shirtless and he does mm-hmm. his his cover ba- band, which, yeah. by the way, all these women that were like, we hate him. He's done. They're all going to the shows. <laughs> yeah, it's fun so, time. Here is the thing. Oh, this nobody is the best thing ever happened to him. Yeah, nobody yeah. gets killed. And now his time is coming. Right. While the all, he's mad at all the other girls in the cast, including his ex, Ariana, Lala, and Sheena, because they had podcasts. And like me, we talked a lot about it because there was stuff all the time. And it was just a fascinating topic because it not only involved cheating, right. people we all knew that were playing themselves on TV, but also the portrayal of a girlfriend with your man, which is very, very juicy and we had never seen on reality TV before. That is why there was a frenzy about it. But he's like, you know, they used me for clicks and views and whatever. And I'm like... Isn't that what it's all about, though? Yeah, and and he has a show, too. They all have podcasts now. Everyone has a podcast. Okay, all right, fine. But, you know, when you say... And I mean... Look at this photo. I mean, he is good looking. I also want to say that's a nice trick to make your bicep. Do you know that, Chris? You just press your arm. You press down. your arm. You twist yeah. it a little, and then you pr- like yeah, press. Yeah. But he does have a very good body. Yeah, he's Let's pretty give jacked him that. up. This guy. Let's give him that. He has a good body. But then he also Raquel has also spoken because, of course, she has a podcast, mm-hmm. and she says he says in the show last night, "I really love her. I really want to talk to her." But she did another extension at the rehab place for her mental health. Right. And then he wrote her and said, you are so, um, why are you so dependent on that place? So he's just awful all around. So yeah. So there you go. Um, okay. Chris, has anyone ever, have you anyone ever told you that you look like a celebrity? Yes. Who? I mean, it's not good ones. Lately I've been it. getting a lot of Kevin Bacon. But I think it's like Kevin Bacon now. Like, El- like old wrinkled? Kevin Bacon. Yeah, exactly. No, no, exactly. Like First old all, Kevin, Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon has a little pig nose. No offense. No, he, yeah. And you do not have a little pig nose. Uh, I mean, I, I follow Kevin Bacon on Instagram. I see what the, as a matter of fact, it just happened to me like two days ago. I went and was trying on sunglasses at some Nordstrom. And every time I put them on, I go, you look like Kevin Bacon and nose. I think she was trying to sell me. Like, oh, yeah. then I'm sold. I felt like a Kevin Bacon. <laughs> but I've, loose. Lately, I've been hearing Kevin Bacon. But I don't know, like nobody good. I used to get, I mean, you know, people hate when I say this, but I got Tom Brady a lot. Early, there was a time when my hair was similar. Okay, so before I got a couple, that guy got to it with the hot comb. <laughs> I got a couple of Tom Brady's, but uh, that's about nothing good. Um, well, of course, mine was Celine Dion. Yeah. And, but I have to say, in all the times that people have sent me your doppelganger, never have I thought the doppelganger was better looking than me. Well, that did you have even worse? And than I that? realized that I don't see me. Yeah. I saw an old photo of me Mm -hmm. at the Kardashian first episode. Right. I saw that too. Somebody posted it. And I was like, you were a, you were a goofy looking dork. I never (laughs) realized that before. Yeah. Well, those are the times. No. Oh yeah. You don't think so? (laughs) I thought I was better looking Mm -hmm. this whole time. No wonder people are annoyed that I have so much confidence. Well, I really thought I was like pretty cute my whole life. Yeah. I could not understand why I didn't get into more sororities. I didn't understand why I didn't, why I got kicked out of the Tarzana pageant. I mean, look on a scale from one to 10, what, 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 now, what do you say? Now, I think I'm probably like a six. A six, like what, what, what all this using? What, oh, you now get it up, with you all get the it up to an eight. Okay. Now at my age, Mm -hmm. if we're going to line me up against women my age that don't have access to L.A. plastic surgery and good makeup, Uh now I'm at the top. Sorry, 10. Like, no, not 10. Like, now I'm like eight. Okay. But I think back like 35, 40 years ago when everyone just had their teeth, everyone had their lip size, original noses, symmetrical faces that were just beautiful or not. Yes, Six. 
I don't know if you watched the We Are the World documentary on uh, Netflix. I watched it's a little. Excellent. I, okay. It's, I, I mean, Why I'm, can't I'm I just, get? I know. I'm just so into that no, world I that I, I could, loved but it. But then I turned it off. Okay, go on. I'll it. give it another chance. Go anyway, on. Uh, I'm going on a plane. You know what okay, I'm going to yeah, do? You should watch. It. It. Okay. Anyway, that I'm I'm watching it. Going. Oh, this is when nobody had anything. Like they're not bad looking, but it's like. Bruce Springsteen's teeth, like Bruce, Bruce Springsteen now is like a model. Like he's, right. he's got all the what needs all the shit. Eyelashes, but then he's got crooked brow, teeth. Brows. And Cindy Lauper's got you know, all, you know. There's no, there was no whitening toothpaste back right. then or right. any of that. I mean, everybody looks unless you're Diana Ross or you're, you're genetically blessed. Right. Most of them kind of look like shit in that. And I'm like, oh, that's why it was 1985. Right. Nobody had anything yet. The other thing people have been saying, like on TikToks and stuff, they'll throw, they'll show old videos of like kids in high school, like in the late 80s. Right. And they're like, and the comments are like, why do all these people look so old? Yeah. I don't know the conspiracy behind it. Why do they look so old? Well, I'm going to say it was Prell. Which used to be the shampoo. I mean, we didn't even have the good shampoo. We, we didn't, didn't have, have. We didn't can, have Nexus. I want to say Paul that conditioner Mitchell. wasn't even a thing no, until the eighties. No, no, you what one tube? <laughs> 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 I mean, it was just like, and then you use. You dried your hand. Remember those school paper towels you used to dry your hands with? They my, were made out of like just lumber. It was like my mom when my mom came to L.A. from Chicago, um, and she was a Midwest girl. She said she was in the grocery store and this woman walked up to her and said, Dr. Bernstein. And she goes, what? Dr. Bernstein. He did your nose. And she's <laughs> like, no, what are you talking? She never knew anyone that had gotten a nose job or anything. Right. Then she had a friend who went through a divorce that she was selling her house and she went to go visit her and she got a boob job. And um, and she's like, your boobs, Elaine, how did your boobs? And she goes, oh, Pam, I just did. I must, I must yeah. increase my bust. And she believed her for like years. <laughs> I, my mother had somebody in her family. I think she's still alive. She's 102 years old. Yeah. Her name is Rosie, which is a cousin of my mother's. She had a breast implants. I This must have been in the late 60s. Early well, I think 60s. Dolly Parton was like one of the first people they, to do it. And, yeah. I don't know what they put in there. Oh, oh, tuna cans or something, whatever. But she's still like she's still going. I think they're still in there, whatever foreign object it is. It's Goes to show you, yeah. you know, yeah. Supposedly you're supposed to replace it every ten years. Maybe you don't yeah, have to. I know. If the woman is 101, still <laughs> rocking and going around, yeah. Oh my god! But and yeah, but it is so funny to see people now. And it's you know, Marilyn comp- Monroe got a nose job. Did she? I don't. And I want to say someone else back then. But there's no way she would have been who she is had she not gotten her nose job. Some people, like uh, like Kenny Rogers. Remember yeah. when Kenny Rogers went through all that weird plastic surgery? And yeah. it was like, well, you're Kenny Rogers. We're already kind of a handsome guy for Kenny Rogers. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, what did you think they were going to do that was going to... Like, some people can use a bit of an enhancement because they're yeah. already... You know, yeah. they have a foundation to work with. Yeah. And some people are like, well, screw it. You're just well, Kenny Rogers. Okay, so let's get to this. This is Love is Blind. Yes. And it's season six. Okay. And I think there's six epi- episodes out, and now there's another chunk coming, okay? Right. Or maybe it's one so we I don't know what how Netflix is doing things now. You should know since, you know, you're sleeping with the enemy over there. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> she's, she's, she's not a part of this. I know. Yeah. It is so good. You love is blind. It is really good this season. Yeah. Always when I watch it, I just go, I need to appreciate being married more because this is all these people want. Right. Is to fall in love and get married. Now- there is this one girl, and you're not supposed to know. The whole thing is that you're not supposed to know someone's ethnicity or whatever. But there's been times when in their conversations where they can't see each other, it's like I remember there was a time like two of them realized that they're both of Indian descent. And, right. they, you know, because we're just talking about traditions and stuff, you could figure it out. Mm-hmm. And um, but this she brings up, has anyone ever told you to look like a celebrity to this guy? And he goes, no, not really. What about you? And she goes, um, yeah, a bunch of times people said I've looked like a machine gun kelly's girlfriend or wife or something and he's like megan fox i guess that's what people say i look like so anyway it's down to her this girl chelsea and this other girl jess who Mm -hmm. really does look kind of like megan fox she's a single mom she's 28 she has a, a tight size zero body with a butt and tits the lips the whole gorgeous okay and he ends up choosing chelsea because I think he was scared of being the, the stepdad. 
But also, yeah, I think he was whacking off to Megan Fox right. for the last five days when he left the pod. And she kind of bitchy about it. Jess goes, um, so you're picking Chelsea. Okay, when you see me, you are going to die. You're going to be an EpiPen. You're going to flip, like kind of bitchy about it anyway. So they get together and he is like, Hey, now she is a good looking girl. And in the eyes, she kind of looks do, like Megan yeah, Fox. I see the Megan she Fox. She does. And she is, it's, she's letting this roll off her back. Right. People are being so mean about it. Megan Fox has been nice. She's like, she's being cool about yeah. it. And, you know, hey, you're sitting and talking to people all day long. Is something going to slip that's going to hurt you? I mean, right. there was another girl that talked about her views on abortion. I'm like, oh, this girl's life is over. You know, like, I just, like, what are you, you're supposed to be yourself. And then there was this guy that was so weird and he he liked these two girls and he told them the exact same thing and they heard them, each other talking about their great date with him and right. realize that they caught the player in the act. And I was watching it like with Brandon and I'm all, Brandon, this is what guys do. And we never realize it till we have proof. They figure out what words work and then they can use them on multiple girls at the same time. So his thing with both girls was, let's just leave here right now. Let's just like you and me just get up and leave. Let's just go. Yeah. So the girl's like, oh, my God, he's chosen me. But he said to everybody, anyway, he left. It is so good. So now they have the pairings. And now we're going to go to see what is happening with it. Uh, it's, But, yeah. Okay. I, I suggest to people, never say, do you know who you look like unless the person is at Megan Fox level. Do not say to, a le- to somebody, of anybody, that okay, p- people say Mariska Hargitay to me. Okay. That I can take. I see that one. Um, Selena, I'm happy with. The Saw Puppet, that's not a good one. Saw Puppet, not good. Um, Um, There's just been some random ones where someone will just send it to me. (laughs) Caitlin. (laughs) No, you know what? I will take Caitlin. Because Caitlin Caitlin Dunup also looks like Cindy Crawford. Yeah. So if you want to put me, Caitlin, and Cindy Crawford across, I'm done. I'm down. Totally down. Um, But yeah, I think it's a, a, I just think it's something that you should not. Send to people. Well, what worse than that is celebrity, yes. But do you ever get one, somebody says, you look like my cousin or my uncle or whatever, and yeah. then you finally see them? You're like, oh my God, what am I, does my mirror in my house skewed or something? Like, am I- like, Apparently there is a, a there is like a, a app or something where it switches it, and it's like, this is how people really see you. Yeah, and because- it's different. I guess I in, in most it. pictures, you're, aren't you reversed? I don't understand how I don't that know, works. I don't know either, but yeah- I mean, I have one mirror in my house. Where I am gorgeous. I, I tell really? my wife, I said, you got it. That's the mirror to go in. And we all use, that's the one we use for anything. That's we have your a lot last of check mirror? We it's, a la- la- we it's our we last had, check mirror. We one. had a last check mirror in our sorority house. We have last check. Yeah, this is last check um, mirror. But it's almost, it, I think it's well, giving you false. obviously boutiques false... have always bought skinny mirrors. I don't think so. I think some of them, I mean, some, some of them, them are going not, to. But yeah. some of them, I now know right. what's a skinny mirror. And yeah. I know Heather. This is a skinny mirror. And this is full. Are you believing it? Are you saying, I, I, I don't look as good in whatever I'm wearing if as this I mirror is leading so to believe? If I look so incredibly snatched and stuff, I have to say, Heather, this is probably a skinny mirror. Okay. And there's times I've asked. I mean, you're pretty skinny. There's times I've asked the girls yeah. working there. Okay. And they'll be like, yeah, kind of. I think so. If they don't care. If, they, they're, if they're the owner, they're like, no. If they work there, they're like on their phone. And they're like, yeah, it's a skinny mirror. Speaking of old pictures where you looked dorky. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to get those Facebook memories or whatever. They come yes. back 10 years, 12 years, whatever. Now, Facebook's been around a long time. Now you go, yeah. I think they go back as far as like 13 years mm-hmm. or something. And so for us, that was like height of Chelsea Lately right. year around there. And I've, I've seen a couple of red carpets where we were at for whatever reason, after Lately or something. And all the outfits we're wearing, and I know they were of the time, the right. cuts of jeans and everything were different. But God, we, like nobody could have helped us a little bit. Like we all looked like we're wearing like t- bad jeans and bad, not, but I am at least. I shouldn't speak well, for everybody. Well, I got but. these dresses said to me that were free. Yeah. And I needed a new outfit and we were on the show like every other week yeah. in the beginning. And we were only getting an extra $300, $400 to be on the show. So you don't want to buy a new outfit every time. So I was getting these dresses and- the whole thing was that Michelle Obama was wearing them too. Okay. They weren't really even that expensive as retail. Right. But I was getting them for free. But they were so like, why? Like I was so young. Yeah. Why am I wearing this conservative like 
dorky like daytime talk show dress yeah. Yeah. when I should have been like dressing like a hip girl on a late night show. I know. I know. It's a little bit like Drew Barrymore. You know, the yeah. outfits come, some of them, she always looks like she's, you know, hunting, well, she is hunting com- foxes. <laughs> But you know, I mean, thank it, you. It works thank you, on Chris. her, kind of. Um, I'm actually. This is my last day at 48. I am now 49, and I feel mature. I feel special, but I am. I'm technically I'm still a child of the 70s, and that's why I love the style. No, her style is like that's pretty, 70s. That's good. Thank you. That's I know I've 70s. seen it a million oh, times. Well, I'm glad but, you still love it. But you've you toned said, it down. You, you said I used to look like a stroke victim. No, <laughs> it was getting a little strokey. Now it looks really good. You've you've t- you've toned it down a little bit. It's good. She's toned it down. Yeah. Um, she's still all up in everybody's vagina when she interviews uh, them. Which, it's so shocking. I, but I love it though. I think she's smart in that those things go viral. They're getting a clip. So yeah. why the fuck not? And I do think it's natural to her. I think she is someone that like really connects with people and I do think she has like a it, pure soul. So I, I do too. So I, I think it's like, it's fine. Um, but no, her whole style is like that 70s style. It looks good. Yeah, she's any hole, any hole or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'm cool good lots. with it. They're called cool culottes. Lots. Oh, I know it well. <laughs> culottes. I love culottes. People, culottes are pants that are wide-legged that come mid-calf, but then mm-hmm. you wear them with your with boots so your ankles don't look weirdly yeah. skinny. Mm-hmm. And then also like a tweed vest. Yeah. It looks like a golfer like from the 50s. They used to wear cool, more or less culottes, you know? <laughs> totally. Yeah. Okay. Thinking of love. Okay, this person goes, um, my client proposes from jail on FaceTime. Okay, this whole thing, this girl then walks up and the guy from jail is on that screen right here. Mm-hmm. And he asked her to marry him. But whoever did it, like the guy from prison, he's probably like yeah. some access money. He then hired a actual like um, wedding planner or event planner to do all this. So the yeah. whole thing was like, guys, you have no excuse. Like if a guy from prison can set it up, you can set up a proper engagement. I'm like, can we just... That's nice. Like, first of all, what is he yeah. in jail for? And how does he have this extra money? Tells me he like, he's probably like, let me do this yeah. time. I buried this money in a, under a hill. And once I get out, you and I can have a great life. Right. But um, I'm always fascinated. I remember there was like a, a show about um, like, you know, wedding gowns or whatever. And, and the girl was, you know, with her mom and she was getting married to like Say a prisoner. Say yes to the dress. Yeah, but it was a different one than that. Oh, but it was, a, uh, the girl was going so. to a prison. Yeah. <laughs> and um, maybe, you know what? Maybe someone told me this because I definitely exist because I saw the photos. Maybe it wasn't a show. And she was marrying a guy in San Quentin. And yeah. she was like beautiful and like attractive and everything. And she was trying on dresses with her mother who was paying for it. Mm-hmm. That's how much some mothers just want their daughter to be married. <laughs> <laughs> and on her back, she had the whole uh, seascape of San Quentin on like her back. tattooed? Yes. Oh. Wow. She doesn't sound like she's got all there. That's a problem. I mean, she's probably, yeah. You're probably happy today. Speaking of prison, oh I my know. God. So, but Ruby rightfully Frank, so. Oh my God. Ruby Frank, who is the awful mother who made her money on YouTube talking about being a strict Mormon parent. Broke up with her husband, went to live with her podcast partner, and had their kids living with her in which she was caught for severely abusing two of them. Like starving them. Starving them. Uh, Their hands were bound. They had duct tape on them. In Utah, they were both convicted, she and the other woman. And I don't really understand this, how the sentence works, but they said it can go anywhere from one to 60 years because- uh, the 60 years could be all the counts that she has been convicted right. of. So it's four years here, five years here, neglect this, that. Mm-hmm. So then other people are like, but wait, could she also get out in a year? What I hate is that now she's saying quotes like this, which I think just going to make your kid feel guilty again, fucking with them. I'm from working on my... She said, to my babies, I believe dark was light and right was wrong. I would do anything in this world for you. Really? Yeah. Like give them fucking food? Mm-hmm. Horror, just horrible. I think, listen, every child abuser should be, you know, uh, get the worst punishment. Right. But when it's your own child, I think it's so much worse because how is this child ever supposed to ever trust anybody? I know. When their own parent. So anyway, she's gone. I don't know why 
the dad is not being convicted, but I guess it's because the dad was not in the home when the kids were being abused. They, are they divorced or something? They're, well, now they're getting yeah, divorced. Right, they were right, separated right. at the time. Yeah. And I think also if he's proven to be of the right sound of mind and everything, like yeah. we do want the kids to at least have their one parent. Mm-hmm. But I think in the end, she'll probably do like at least 15. Yeah. Hopefully. hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, this woman's in trouble. She's just been arrested. She posted that she had her daughter waxing other women's uh, bikinis. Is that a woman? But that, the, the shot of it is like, It's a woman. It's bikini waxing. Okay. You could also- You know what? I don't know if that's a, a woman. A man could get butt, butt, his butt waxed. Poor little girl. Um, couldn't be older than six. Doesn't look like and, it. But then she also posted it, and they said, well, she was arrested for- Child neglect, child endangerment. I'm like, what about child labor laws? Does no one like? I feel like that was so something of like the 1940s. Mm-hmm. But like, can we start getting some parents convicted of child labor laws when they put them on their TikToks and all this stuff? But then also have them actually doing like the real work. Yeah. Where's you should have a license for waxing this little girl. If I were the person with my legs up like that, and if you guys could see this photo, it's unbelievable. But I would have, I would be like, is she? I don't know if she's got the skills, but I feel like, you know what I mean? I would have I would have stopped what it. Girl, like, that woman should be arrested as well for not stopping or, it. Or what if the woman is like, she had so many clients. Yeah. And so then she was like, you sit back, put on this, like, sleep gear mm-hmm. mask, and I'll be in to do it. And then she's like, touch her little daughter, go in and do it. Yeah. And the daughter doesn't, you know, meh thought it was a game or something (laughs) listen i just thought about the labor laws that were broken when i was a kid oh yeah so my parents were realtors and my dad would rent a truck and we would sit in the back of a truck on a on top of all these pumpkins yeah we'd go to the place and buy the pumpkins okay anywhere between five and seven dollars a pumpkin why pumpkin because we put it and say bob and pam McDonald Country Club Realtors welcome oh. you to Woodland Hills. Enjoy your pumpkin. Even, but that's only like in the fall, right? We did once a year. We put it on everyone's doorstep. Oh, okay. And we would bring our friends. Oh. And we would go. We'd have to walk up. You know where we live. Yeah, There's yeah. hills. There's long right. driveways. Mm-hmm. And and I, my friend Liz, she's a little go getter too. So mm-hmm. she would go and walk up there. One day I just remember she was like running down screaming, and there's like a two giant dog chasing after her, and then b- the pumpkins rolling after her, and she's like, ah! And then my dad's like, oh Jesus! And then then we caught the, these two kids were like, oh these are fun. Let's let's go around the neighborhood and throw them and break them. Yeah, smash the. My pumpkin. dad, these kids couldn't have been older than ten. He drove up in the truck as we're bouncing around on top of the pumpkins, and he's like, and he just grabbed them. Yeah. Again. No, none of this is. Grabbed him and was like, listen to me, you little shit. Yeah. You know, and like, I was like, oh, fuck. He did that at Magic Mountain too. These kids jumped in front of the line and Mm -hmm. pulled them from their collar (laughs) and was like, get in the back of the line, you little shit. Like, I can't believe. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, these days, like, you can't even walk up to anyone's house anymore and put something on there. They'd shoot you if you walked out. You know, it's like a whole different world. God, like I even know. like so selling door to door, and like kids used to be able to go sell door to door and stuff like that. Yeah, chocolates. can't do that anymore. Well, I'm glad people realized that was weird. I know it is weird. I used to, you know, I, I Newsday was. Oh, the, isn't the, Girl Scout cookies coming around? Yeah, they're around. They're around. Yeah. You know what? I got a I got a box the other day. What My flavor? daughter's school what flavor? S'mores. Mm. I got to tell you, I've never been a fan. I always think they're a little hyped up. I, there are better cookies on the market. Like back in the I time know, when they first came out, the Girl Scouts. Hey, great! That's why I did it. But I always thought they were they were they were only six bucks a box. I didn't think it was too bad. I was like, oh, that's not so that's bad. That's a lot now. I didn't think it was so bad. Well, they went up. They used to be five boxes, five a box because I remember you could get four boxes for twenty. Okay. So they went up, rightfully so. Everything's going up. Yeah. But um, of course, mint the mint ones. The love. I will do it. Never. But now, but now it's so easy because it's still on the parent because the parents will like. They always knew that I didn't have girls and Girl Scouts, yeah. you know? So you hit up those parents or boy moms and you're like, hey, you know, what do you want? And then you just go to the people's house you know yeah. and you have your little girl and, you know, you get to see the little girl. I always feel I like- I don't want to see the mom. Yeah. I can put the kid in the outfit 
At least right. have her knock on my door so I can get the cuteness. Yeah. I'm buying four boxes. Now they just go out in front of a store. And they go in front of the, yeah. the pot places, yeah. the weed stores. Good. It's great. Yeah, why not? Sell them. I, I always felt like the Cub Scouts and the Boy Scouts, whatever they're doing, you know, we all found out what they were doing. And uh, I, I felt like they were sitting back. Like, they never... They never looked at the Girl Scouts and goes, we got to get something over here. Like, the, they're killing it with these cookies. I know. Like, why don't we sell beef jerky? Something manly. Yeah. Like, beef jerky or something. Well, now, because of the Boy Scouts, they they're said- They're out there whittling sticks in the woods. Well, now girls can be Boy Scouts. Oh, good. But then they're still- But the Boy girl- Scouts is gone, isn't it? No. Well, you got it. girls can be Boy Scouts. Good. Have a couple of girls in there and um, keep an eye on things. Well, they make sure my sons were in the Boy Scouts. So there's a whole thing you do. You can they never- get the Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts? Did your boys get Cub, into- and then you become a boy. I know, so they went through. Yeah, okay. but then yeah. come fifth grade, then I it was just like too much work, and Peter and I bailed. Yeah, I never made it. My, I feel bro- my two bad. younger brothers, my two older brothers, did. I would go do the camping thing, and then, like, there was this one. <laughs> There was this one thing for it where we went to that museum where the dinosaurs are. Mm, museum of Natural History. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I thought it sounded so fun. And it was um, spend the night um, in the in the natural oh, like history. night at the museum. Yes. Yeah. So I brought and I brought my other kids too. I brought Mackenzie, Drake, and Brandon. And of course, Peter was fucking smart, and he's such a prima donna. He's like, "I am not doing that." I'm like, "Well, I'm doing it. It's my one weekend not doing stand up, and I'm going to be the fabulous mother." I'm sleep on a hard floor with the kids. Go all the way to L.A. Down to L.A. Yeah. We do the kind of the fun tour, the eating, and now it's time to set up the beds. Well, I was smart enough to have never brought in the bedding. It was in the car, so when I'm like, "Okay, you guys, let's go get our bedding," and then we got in the car and I go, "You know what?" Um, would you guys just want to like get ice cream on the way home and just go sleep in our own beds? And they're like, well, okay. They were always, if I could always get them to do some what I wanted them to do. Yeah. They were never like, no, mom, you promise. They're like, all right. I heard <laughs> it was the worst night ever because all the dads were snoring oh, no. with those high ceilings, yeah. those acoustical ceilings. <laughs> it was just like the snoring going back Sounded and like forth. Sounded like the oh. dinosaurs had come back to life. <laughs> oh my God, what a nightmare. Yeah, this uh, is the shit I have to be doing soon. You know, all these things you went through, I'm just starting. I feel starting. like the new millennial parents, right? Which you are not one, but the li- millennial uh, parents. Yeah, you're an ex. I'm okay, an ex. Whatever I am. But the millennial parents are kind of smarter about a lot of things that I've noticed it since I've yeah. gone back to my school. Like they're more logical. They're not sentimental. They're like. So yeah. I feel like they're not going to be doing all the dumb shit that we did, the bake sales and all. They're going to make it that as long as the kid learns some responsibility, but it shouldn't land on the parent and it shouldn't be a waste of people's time and money to yeah. make $12 profit. I know. It's just not worth it. The bake sale at my daughter's school is so funny because they have one. And then the, I see the car line dropping the kids off and I'm like, why are we selling brownies for a dollar? This guy's driving a $200,000 car. Can't he just give you whatever you need to build some dumb shit? <laughs> Drake, when he started at Calabasas. Yeah. First of all, we made him ride his bike to Calabasas. Pretty far. It is. Um, and he then, his freshman year, realized that the vending machines did not have the spicy hot chips. Mm-hmm. So he went and he copied- Campaigned he, for? No, he copied somebody else. Somebody else was already selling shit out of his bag. Oh. You know? So he went to Costco and he did that. Got hot Cheetos Yeah, and, and then those kids came and tried to like start shit with him. Oh. And um, But no, he was making a lot of money. Really? Yeah, and then the school said, okay, now nobody, because the vending machine people were like, what the fuck is going on? No yeah. one's buying our vending machine food. And they're like, because we have all these kids that are selling hot Cheetos for like less. Like if it was yeah. like 150 at the thing, he was selling it for a dollar. And um, so yeah. So whatever you can do, be my an nephew just won school president for his, his campaign strict campaign strictly on more peanut butter on the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's not enough peanut butter, and the whole school agreed, and he won. Now he's president of the school. I I love it. I love it. I remember <laughs> I was trying to run for treasurer, and I said the toilet paper has to be more plot more plot whatever yeah, ply. Sure, sure. But anyway, I I didn't realize back then everyone hated me then too, and I didn't win. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Chloe Kardashian um, mm-hmm. got in trouble for face tuning her cat. Wow. 
she face tuned herself and her cat. I don't know if it was on purpose. I'm thinking it was by mistake. But that's the real cat at the bottom, and the face tune is no, the top one. No, I think both are face tuned. Oh, okay. I was gonna say they look the same. I mean, don't it doesn't People if you're face tuning yourself. Does yeah. it face tune? So I don't. Yeah, even, like I don't even gets know in the all shop. the different apps, but I, I just thought either. that was kind of funny. Um, how do you feel about this excessive, like these, okay, this wedding, I came across this video and the girl comes out, ding, 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 the Beyonce mm-hmm. song. And she's got four of her friends. I don't know if they had to get out of their bridesmaids dress. They have to wear the, you know, single ladies outfit. This has the, been going on for quite some yes, time now. And the, the guy, and the guy sits there and, and is, you know, she dances. Yeah. And I mean, just when you start to watch it, cause it's pretty entertaining. Right. By the fourth song of the medley. Oh, you're like, we got it. Yeah. And then I'm always just like, what? First of all, already, I can't believe what brides do as far as these extravagant trips and all these things that the bridesmaids have to do. But then to be like, okay, and you guys have to commit to like dancing, learning routine and the guys too. Yeah. And it's all because they want that. They want to get. I guess a couple hundred people, a couple hundred thousand followers. Hope, that's the hope, That's I the think. hope, but what do yeah. you do with that then? Nothing. They're, we're going to follow you, and then we're going to see you in your boring-ass house, and you're going to lose those followers. It's not going to be a career and then they go, because you did a dance at your wedding. But you have to go to rehearsals and stuff. Can you imagine like having to go to rehearsals at your friend's house for like the wedding? Like, What oh, am we I bitch, doing? We bitched about each other if someone was like, Late to like yeah. one of the one shower you were mm-hmm. expected to attend, let alone you have to now go to numerous um, dance rehearsals. I have to go to a wedding on Saturday. I'm going to a wedding on Saturday. I thought I was done with weddings, okay. but I got a friend. Who is this? An older friend of mine. He's been a friend for years. First marriage or second? Well, third. I think it's probably fourth. It could, it could be the fourth, but I love that. I believe it is. That's hot. Uh, he's not even 60 yet. And yeah. So he asked me to say, he said, can you speak? He doesn't have any family. Like, I, I think I'm just- Because they're all dead? Yeah, they're all dead. They are. They're all dead. And I'm like, me and my brother and my brother. The only reason he didn't ask my brother is because my brother doesn't know how a microphone works. He's an idiot. And so he's like, well, I guess Chris can speak. You know, I'll let him do it. And he yeah. asked me if I would speak on Saturday. And I was like, I don't. Like, I don't know. Like, you can't do the roasty thing. You yeah, do yeah. it for two 22-year-olds that are getting married. Right. You know, so I don't know. I'm just going to be- just a, the good luck to you both, you know, for two 58-year-old people getting married. Well, I can't believe that when you asked me to officiate your wedding, I thought that I would be besieged <clears throat> with offers after. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you no. did a great job. Still the only time I've ever done it. Good. Well, you don't want no, to be. You know what? Yeah. It was so stressful to me. Yeah. I loved it. Mm-hmm. But it was so stressful because, you know, I've been accused in my life. <laughs> Of making it about me. No. So yes. No. Yes. I will not stand here and listen to this. <laughs> so I think that's a really hard thing to right. do. Um, but I've said this before. I do think if um, if you're not religious or you don't have a special pastor in your life, it is great if you can find someone that knows you. Yeah. To Absolutely. marry you. Yeah. Um, but I love doing it. It was fun. I loved it. It was it yeah. was so fun. But I I definitely think I definitely yeah that's the other thing people do the speeches to have it go viral. This one girl I just saw another one where she gets up and she's like she's young but she did it to Ice Ice Baby. The speech? Yeah. Oh. And the groom and the best man are like <laughs> she's like thinks- hey stop everybody now. now and I'm like this is so bad. When I was in my sorority at Gamma Phi Beta at USC we had to do sketches. Yeah. We did it. We did a sketch and a, a rhyme to that mm-hmm. because it's very easy to change the words to. Right. So anyway, it wasn't getting a lot of love anyway. But I just am like, oh my god, just have a good time. Like, can why I, are you can putting I, your guests? Can I bring this? out? Uh, yeah. I brought some props with me, but and it, this was yes. it actually has to do with a wedding. If okay. you don't mind, yes, please. Uh, I don't know what to wear. Honestly, I don't know what to wear to the wedding because it's it's a wedding of two fifty late fifty year old people. It's in like a restaurant down in like Orange County. Okay. I don't think it's anything like I don't think it's even suity. But I mm-hmm. I can't wear jeans, of course. I, already know I have what, a suit. Okay, I already know what I think you should wear. But tell okay. me what your thoughts are. What, is, okay. what am I deciding between? So the other day I was like, I now let me tell you my problem with suits. I have a suit that I think would work. 
Yeah. But I, now the last couple of years I've bought suits for different things that I've had to go to. Yeah. And then what will happen is you'll spend seven, $800 on a suit. What about your wedding suit? It looks so nice. You don't want to wear that one again. No, but it's like a, the cut is different. It was a year, no, six years ago. Oh. Like it's, it's already it's pretty fancy, that brown I know, but it's suit. already okay, kind of gone. gone. All right. I think it's, I don't think I have it anymore. Anyway, so like, I'm like, I don't want to buy another suit that I'm going to wear once and then okay, five years later. Right. Okay. So then I'm right like, the I, have these, yeah. I have these slim fit pants. Yeah. And I look, I saw a guy wearing these type of shoes that I'm about to show you. Okay. And I went and bought, I saw them. I was performing the other night in Ontario. Yes. And I got there early. You went to the Ontario the Improv Mall. in the Ontario Mills. And next to the Improv was like a Nordstrom rack. Nice. Had to kill some time. Yeah, and I just, do. and I don't have time. It's a Saturday the wedding. Yeah, so I bought the shoes that yeah. I think are going to work. Okay, for my look that I want. I'm now going to show you the shoes. Okay, I'm wearing them regardless of what it, what you All say. All right. Or not. Okay. Are you ready? I'm scared. Remember when you first cut your hair really short? Yes. That still is a, a memory and just skip want, history. I don't want this to be okay. Now, okay. <laughs> okay, wait. Okay. Wait. Okay, can is there a camera? Yes, okay, yes. there you go. Um, now, a let me. I'm gonna ask you if your honest opinion. Okay. First of all, I know they look cheap. They look cheap, right? They're not like the Gucci one or whatever. Oh, They're I don't know about Steve cheap. Madden's. Okay. You know, sixty bucks out the, the door. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Two, white, what's the white shit on it? I don't know. It's from something in the bag. Okay. Too too chunky. Do I look a little like Alicia Silverstone and Clueless? I think she wore the same ones. <laughs> I have been talking about how I've been obsessed with watching old millionaire matchmakers okay. on Netflix yeah. because it's from 2011. The styles, the thin lips, the yeah. knot, like everything about it is her. And her two sidekicks are what I like to call punkers. Yeah. They'd, called e they'd be called emo today. Mm -hmm. And... If those were bigger, that's bottoms, what I was going bigger bottom, like the Doc Martin. I bottom. think they're it's fine. It's a big bottom. I honestly think they're fine. Okay. Oh, good. I think they're probably going to be really comfortable, mm -hmm. and they're going to not that you need to be any taller, but they're going to not hurt you in the height department. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they're overly ridiculous. Are they super comfortable? They seem like they're they'd fine. Be, okay. I mean, you know, just for the day, I'm not going to wear right. them everywhere. I think I'm good with it. Okay. Thank you. That and makes then me what, feel good. A black suit, like a kind of like a gray suit. Yeah. Very si slim fitting gray suit. A tie or no tie? No tie. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, no, no tie. I would no do tie. crisp white shirt. That's what I got. Suit, no tie. Belt or no belt? Of course belt, yeah. Okay, love. Black belt with these. Great, done. Okay, so I done. can do it? Okay, you can do it. You. Next thing? One more. Hot, a hot, hot iron for your hair. The last time I was here, oh, I mentioned yes, a- Oh, uh, is, this is, is this juicy scoop or juicy fashion? The last time I was here, yeah. I said I was in Vegas. Yeah. And I said I had been there for a week. I was performing it. Uh, for a week in Vegas. And I said that, you know, you get stuck on crazy after you're there for a week. Right. And I said I bought myself a pork pie hat. A lot oh, of, yes. A lot of people were like, what is that? What I don't is that? Some yeah, people said they yeah. knew. Some people said they didn't. And they said I need to see the hat. Okay. And I believe that I could pull this off. So here goes. This is what it is. I bought it. Okay. I own this now. Okay. And I don't know if I'm... Here you go. Can I be this guy? Absolutely not. I can't. Absolutely not. <laughs> Why not? Chris. Well, okay. Why not? You went from a good-looking <laughs> former model turned comedian. Okay. Now, to wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Dork. Okay. Dorky dork geek. Wait, wait. What about now? No. No? It Still doesn't, no? It's horrific. Okay. It doesn't go together. It, really? It ruins My wife it. said the same thing. She's it's mortified. Awful. It's Absolutely awful. Absolutely mortified. Now take off the hat and keep the glasses on. Okay. Hot. Hot. Okay. Wet. Yeah. Cute. I'm done. Like anybody. So this is, wait, listen, it was only like 30 bucks. I didn't kill myself over it. So no? No? No. One more time. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's like. What about at the beach? You know, like I'm at a you know beach bar. Hey, what's up, everybody? You're telling me you're going to choose that over like a really cool, just like no. worn out baseball no, hat? No, no, no. I'm saying I could throw a different but, but thing. But I'm saying this a baseball look. hat. With cool glasses that and too. your style. Yeah. yeah. This Keep is just one what, look. Listen, let me tell you something. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's taken me a long time yeah, yeah, yeah. in my life to figure out what works for me. All right. I'm at, yeah. I don't care what comes into fashion or not. Gotcha. T-length. I will never wear a T-length dress. Do you What's know what that? that is? No. That is a dress 
And instead of being long or short, it comes right here. Oh. So all you see are tiny, 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 tiny ankles yeah. squirting out the bottoms. <laughs> Awful look. It'll never happen. So It'll never this, work for this me. This is the T length of yes. hats. Never gotcha. going to okay. work for me. Fair enough. Thank you. I will never do a low bl- a low back deal. Okay. Because I don't have a great back. Yeah. I don't have a great butt. Oh, yeah. Use what you got. That, I don't know who that looks good on. That was so just, much worse than I ever like thought. Bruce Willis or something. Didn't he used to, you know, hey. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it's no, <laughs> okay. no, and no. Yeah. I thought it would just, Chris, be, fun. just Chris, be fun. We have more stuff to discuss. Okay, gotcha. I'm going to milk out my Chris and use him on Beautiful. Tuesday show. Yeah. But before we go, could you please tell everybody where they can see you live? Well, next weekend I'll be in Philadelphia. I'll be uh-huh. Philadelphia. I'm coming to Philadelphia, the punchline of Philadelphia, uh, February 29th and March 1st and 2nd. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in Philadelphia. And then Sunday night in the DC Improv, one night only, Sunday night, March 3rd, uh, New York uh, Comedy Club in Stanford, Connecticut. March 22nd, Auburn Theater in upstate Auburn, New York. A that little theater that's going to be real cute. Uh, going to be there. That's the 23rd of March. And then so many friends. Jola.fun has everything. I'm coming back to Tampa Side Splitters. That's Improv fun. in Dania Beach down there in Florida. Oh, all of loving it. All it. coming up. Frangiola.fun has everything. Thank you. And I, of course, HeatherMcDonald.net. I have dates. I'm coming to Palm Beach the weekend of Easter, West. April 5th. Or 6th and 7th. Um, details to come on that. But I'm also Thousand Oaks sold out. What else do I have? I have uh, Scottsdale uh, Friday, May 4th. And then I also have Temecula June 1. Everything is at Heather McDonald. Oh, Denver Comedy Works. I'm doing that like the Ooh. 16th and the 17th. Nice. In May. May South. 16th, 17th. Comedy Works South. Yes, the classy, the class. Good one. Anyway, HeatherMcDonald.net, also cover to cover is every Tuesday and Thursday Cover to cover is my podcast. Come and have some fun over there. And then Frangiola.fun has all my ticket links. But go see him live. Everyone says that you have never been funnier. Oh, my God. We're having a lot of fun out there. And then we're going to have more with you um, on Tuesday. So we're going to take – so get ready for the best time of your life. Enjoy your days. Bye.